Hi everyone, it's me, Fran Drescher, and here we are in kind of isolation here in Los Angeles, and I just thought that maybe we could chat, talk, catch up. I was talking to my parents today, my mom. They went to the bank today, and they went to Publix down in Florida, and mom, you know, talked about food, most of the conversation, bless her heart. But you know, the important thing is they're feeling more confident because they know that they need to just bolster their immune system. And that makes me very happy because I'm the one that keeps teaching them that. And I keep sending them all of these vitamins and, and healthy things for them to kind of bolster their immune system and create a really safe uh, microbiome in their mouth. All of that stuff is what we have to think about. I mean, you can go to cancerschmancer.org, I've said this before, and you can really see how to detox your home, how to uh, reduce your risk, because once you understand how the immune system works, it's the most incredible system on earth, truly. But we have to know how delicate it can be, how easily it can be compromised, how quickly it won't really work for you if you don't think about the way you're living. So that's all important. And you know, my beloved Samson suddenly dropped dead on me. I have been in the depths of despair. I can't even tell you what this has triggered in me. I tried doing this new kind of therapy called EMDR. And um, it worked for like 36 hours, but Peter, you know, the gay ex-husband, he said that keep doing it because all of a sudden, it, like all the anxiety, all the bad archaic feelings about, oh my God, I, I, didn't, I did something wrong, I didn't save him, I, I didn't do it right, I'm a bad person and I'm punishing myself and I'm beating myself up. It all begins to go away, and you have the memory of what happened, but it's not like triggering all of this stuff that, you know, I mean, it, it goes way back, trust me. I'm, I have an incident with a frog that, you know, like, I mean, that was the cornerstone of all my psychotherapy. Forget about it. So, I'm trying to help myself. One night, I'm lying in bed, right? And I'm like so anxious. I'm like jumping out of my skin. I'm here by myself. I don't have little Samson with me. And you know, he was a really good watchdog. Of course, it was a Pomeranian, so it's like, then what? But I really felt better having him around. And we loved each other. Even though he wasn't an easy dog to love, he was my opportunity to love unconditionally because he did like to nip people. And, uh, and I miss him, I miss him terribly. And one night I was lying in bed, all anxious, jumping out of my skin. And I like looked up and I prayed to God. I said, please help me climb out of this pain. And all of a sudden I decided, ah, I'm gonna open my computer and I'm gonna go on Pet Finders. So I start looking through like every single dog that's within like a 25 mile radius of where I live. And I see this like white husky with one blue eye and one brown eye that is um, at a place in Woodland Hills right here in the valley. And uh, so I thought, uh, I'm gonna try and check out this dog. I'm going to honor Samson by rescuing a dog. Because honestly, I, have, I haven't actually ever rescued a dog. I mean, I rescued them because they were all somewhere and they needed a mama. But this one really needed rescuing. She's really sweet. But, you know, she got lost. I don't know who had her before. She didn't have tags. She doesn't have a chip. Gets hit by a car. So then they bring her to this shelter this is happening in Van Nuys, another town in the valley. And, um, and uh, the shelter says, you know, this dog needs surgery. We, I can't do it. They can't do it. So they start calling all the local rescues. They end up at this place. Um, 
and it's um, called Rock and Rescue on Ventura Boulevard in Woodland Hills. And uh, I called them the next day, or rather Jordan did, my assistant, and they said that the dog was still available. So I get in the car, and I start driving to Woodland Hills, right? And um, on the drive there, um, and this is kind of like divine intervention, and I'm like a Boo Jew or a Buddhist Jew, so I kind of believe in the signs of the universe, and I try and pay attention to it. Out of the blue, this girl, I don't even know, really, but I met her a few times through a mutual friend. She texts me, and she says, I just, you know, want to tell you how sorry I am about your loss, and I feel like you need to get a dog very quickly, and you should ask Samson to guide you. Well, it turns out she's a psychic. So I thought, that's so funny, I said to her, because I'm on my way right now to look at a dog at a rescue. Okay, I end up on Ventura Boulevard now, and I stop at a red light. And on, I glance over to my left, and what do I see at a bus stop but a poster that says, Adopt a Dog. Now, if that isn't a sign, I don't know what it is. So now there's two signs, besides the fact that I prayed to God and found the dog. Then I decide, because I was with a girlfriend, and she said, let's go get some coffee. So we end up at Blue Bottle, because it's all organic, even though it's owned by Nestle, which I don't know about that, but, uh, you know, at least it's all organic. So, and they seem to be doing everything right. So I guess I got to support the company for trying to elevate itself, but I digress. So I go there, and I place my order, and from behind the counter, the barrister says to me, or barista, I don't know how people pronounce it, but don't ever ask a girl from Flushing to pronounce anything. So I get, I go to, uh, the guy says to me, I'm giving you your order for free because you are the best. You're always the best. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is divine intervention because I've been beating myself up that I was bad, that somehow I should have been able to save him, but I didn't save him. You know, he had a stroke, basically, and he was with me to the end, but it, you know, I mean, oh, it was horrible. But anyway, here's this guy I don't know who's telling me that I'm the best. I'm always the very best. And I take that also as a sign, divine intervention, because when somebody tells you something, somebody that you don't know tells you something that you absolutely need to hear, that is an angel. So, of course, I accepted the freebie. Then I walk out of the coffee place, and I see this girl with a broken leg walking this super cute dog. So I said, um, what, uh, you know, kind of dog is this? And she said, I don't know, it's a rescue. I said, oh my God, I'm going to a rescue place right now. She said, I have a very good feeling about that. Okay, I go to the rescue place. If I tell you, I meet this dog that I am calling Angel Grace now. The dog was hit by a car and had a whole broken thing going on. She needed surgery and she was like healed at this point. But I kind of see, I kind of connect the dots between a woman who tells me that she's got a good feeling and she had a broken leg. And then I meet this dog who had a broken leg too. So the dog jumps on top of me and flattens me to the ground. It was not like meeting for the first time. It was like a reunion of long lost friends. Kissing my face all over and I'm, you know, like rubbing her ears and stuff. And I said, did Samson send you to me? Is that who you are? Are you an angel? And then I thought, is that your name? Should I name you angel? And um, then it was probably like uh, two weeks I had to wait. But everybody said, oh, this dog is yours. 
And I filled out the application at Rock and Rescue. I forget what the letters are. A job W G C or something like that. Do you remember? A- I think A G W C. A G W C. Jordan saying, but it's Rock and Rescue, and there's like letters before. I think she thinks it's A G W C. She's probably right. AGWC Rock and Rescue. And they're really good people there. I have to say, this woman, Fabian, who runs it, she feeds the dog all vegan kibble, and then they get donated meat. And all the dogs seem really healthy. She really, you know, they all have really nice space. They're not in cages. They're in, like, pens with couches. Some of them have, like, you know, sofa beds pulled out. Uh, dog houses, lots of blankets. They have tons of, uh, you know, like things to uh, washing machines. And uh, it's very clean. And she's very into organic everything. So I felt like, my God, I'm at the right place. Because that's the way I live, the Kansas Schmidt's way. And so then, of course, they had to get, fix the dog. She had to get spayed. Sadly, because she just went through so much. I mean, she was lost. I, I was lost when I was a little girl once, just for a couple, I, maybe it was maybe a couple of minutes. But I was so scared, and she must have been so scared, bolting about, getting hit by a car. I mean, it's a lot. And then they have to give her a hysterectomy. And I had a hysterectomy because I had uterine cancer almost 20 years ago. And let me tell you something, it's not an easy operation for a female to have. So I feel really bad for her. But anyway, I brought her home, and now she's with me, and I'm working with a trainer because I find that she may be a little rambunctious when people come to the door. When she and I are alone, it's absolute heaven. But then when people come to the door, she gets a little, I don't know what, but we're going to have to work on that, and hopefully she's not going to be too much dog for me because... I'm used to small dogs, and this is a big dog. And I took her for a little walk today, her first walk with me in the neighborhood. But, you know, she was kind of pulling on the leash because she's strong, and I was trying to wrap the leash because I was afraid I was going to lose her. And look, I got a black and blue mark from it, from winding the thing around my hand, so that's no good. And I'm going to have this probably through the whole COVID-19 experience because I heal slowly. So anyway, I was thinking, this is fun, isn't it? And maybe we should just kind of catch up a little bit. Let me see if anybody's writing anything that may be worth chatting about. Let's see here. Let me see before I hang up. But we could pick this up again tomorrow for shower. Queen, I love you. Oh, that's so nice. Fiamma. Uh, I love you, Fran. You know, I feel so blessed. I have to tell you, uh, Deste Buenos Aires. Uh, that's sweet. Oh, I'm seeing Italian flags. I, all my friends from Italy, my heart goes out to you. Hang in. Bolster your immune system. That's the key. You are not helpless. Hello, take a lot of vitamin C, four to 6,000 a day. Stay safe. That's so sweet. Oh, it's okay. Oh my God, I thought it was the brother. No, no, no. Ah. (laughs) All right, well, look, I'm going to say goodbye now. Maybe if I get lonely later, I'll talk to you guys again. And we can do this every day because, you know, Let's just have fun staying home. We're so lucky that we have this kind of, you know, social connection through electronics. And I feel so blessed because I get to see my parents on FaceTime all the time, which is so great also. So stay in the light. Be positive. Make the most out of it. Read that book you haven't read. I think I'm going to write a book during this time. I might as well do something. And um, and that's it. Enjoy yourself. Hey, Angel, you want to say hello? She's right now licking herself in an area that is not that glamorous. 
Angel, 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 Angel. I'll just show you her. Here, there she is. There she is. Angel, good girl. Good girl. I hope I had her uh, for you to see. She's got David Bowie eyes, one blue, one brown. All right, I'm going to go now. Love you guys. Have a great day. Stay well. Stay home. And uh, bolster your immune system. Join CancerSchmancer.org. You won't regret it. Mwah. Did I shut it? <laughs>